to get us started now the kicker Chris Boswell and off we go from Soldier Field on the return here's Tyler Scott and he'll get it up past the 20 to about the 22 so here are the Bears now for their opening drive and they will be let out by their rookie quarterback we're seeing it more and more in this league how teams love to have athletes back there taking the snaps guys who can throw it and move around and get yards with their legs if needed He's one of the best examples that we see out there right now. He can throw for hundreds of yards one week and then run for 100 plus the next. He adds an extra dimension that really confounds defenses when he puts it all together. They will get four yards here on the first down run and that'll make it second and six. Well, you don't turn your nose up at a gain of four, do you? They'll take that on first down. Playbook's got to be pretty well open on second and six. Second down and six now from the 26. He's going to try and take off with it. And he probably should have given that one off as he's going to get hit and taken down behind the line. Now it looks like we're going to get a stoppage here. An injured stealer on that last play. Well, now they're going to come out and take a look at this injury. And we'll be back in a moment. A tough spot here on their opening drive. This is third and seven. Operating from the gun, Williams. Uh, he had a man open, but he missed him, and it's incomplete. That was their first third down try of the game, and clearly something was off in the execution of that play. Good news, they've got a whole game left to clean that up and start clicking on those key third down throws. Fourth down, Corliss Waitman now on to punt. The back deep for the Steelers is Calvin Austin. Fair catch signal four and taken just shy of the 30-yard line. So out come the Steelers now for their first drive. And they'll be led out by a man who nearly broke the single-season rushing record for quarterbacks last season. A true dual threat out of Ohio State, Justin Fields. And not only does he have all the skills that you're looking for as a quarterback, he's incredibly tough and plays the game fearlessly as both a runner and a passer. You provide a good running game around him and let him throw deep off of play action, you've got an all-star in the making. Now a first down throw, Fields. He'll get this into the hands of Van Jefferson. Now he's tackled a yard short of the marker. Good gain of nine on first down. And when you're playing a quarterback with some experience and some moxie, you enter the danger zone when you decide to blitz him because if he's able to diagnose as he did on that play, he can hurt you downfield. He reads defenses so well, doesn't he? He really does, and the best part about that play for him, I don't think that was his primary target. I don't think so either. I think he had the read, figured out where the blitz was coming from, and went to a secondary target for a really nice game. And Fryermuth going to have a Steelers first down as he'll be brought down at the 42-yard line. Here's Fields. It's brought in by Harris. It'll go down as a gain of six, and that's going to bring up second down. Just about every quarterback is trained to really look downfield first before you come back and make a nice, safe throw. And in this case, that's exactly what he did. Found his running back, let him create some space, and it turned out to be a nice play for the offense. This second and four. And they'll run for the first time with Najee Harris. And he'll be brought down at the 45-yard line. Six yards to pick up, and that's a first down. A quick burst there, and he nicely bit off a pretty decent gain. So into Bear territory now. This is first and 10 at the 45-yard line. 
On play action, Fields. Blitz coming and down he goes. T.J. Edwards coming in for that outside linebacker spot, and he buries him for a loss of seven. Pressure can come from all over when you're plotting a defensive strategy. On that particular play, it just came from the outside. Now following the sack, they'll look to make amends on a second down and 17. Harris running straight ahead. And they only get a yard back there. They'll be left with a third down and long. Just not a whole lot of room to operate there on that carry. No, not at all. They did a really nice job staying in their proper places and not allowing any lanes to open up. Seventh play of this drive coming up, but a long way to go on third down. On the draw, it's Harris. And trying to push forward, but he is going to be stuffed up in the backfield. It's a loss of a full three yards, and it brings up fourth down. With his size, he's a tough man to bring down, but they do a nice job there stopping his progress and not allowing him to get back to the line of scrimmage. On fourth down, out is the punter Cameron Johnston to boot it away. And that is very well done there, as this will be marked out of bounds at the five-yard line. Chicago works their way back onto the field here for their second drive of the game. Well, they're going to have to go at least 50, 60 yards here if they want to ensure that they don't have to punt the ball like they did last time. Yeah, so what you're saying is we're not playing to just get out of the shadow of your own goal line, right? You're playing to make sure the punter doesn't see the field again. So it's not picking up a couple of first downs. You want to pick up five or six first downs and make sure you move the ball into their territory. They'll start on the ground with Swift. And yeah, he's going to get a solid gain of nine before being brought down second and right at a yard. And that run there does nothing but juice up the guys who are moving the football. I mean, if you're an offensive lineman, people running it, actually the guy calling plays, you're almost jumping up and down in jubilation, aren't you? Yeah, now you've got options on second down. And big time options. You might want to think about play action and try and get something cheap right here over the top. And he's got Rome, and way up past the 35 before he's taken down. That good for 22 and a first down. They went with the nickel look defensively, so they had five defensive backs in there. Didn't help them stop the run. Yeah, I love that, the nickel look. Five cents, five DBs, but what also happens then? You take a big body off the field in order to insert that guy. So you're taking a big off for a little. And oftentimes you can run the football effectively against that defense. And this will be stopped at the 44. That one good for seven yards. I think defensively you're okay with that. Here in the first quarter, he's going to get some catches, but they rallied to him quickly. And that's what you count on. And I like what you just said. First quarter, can you do it all game long? They catch it, you tackle them, they go down on the spot. Because when you're able to do that and you don't give up big chunks of yardage after the catch. And he's free going down the left side. It's a foot race. And he is out of bounds, but not before he's inside the 30. 64 yards rushing for him as he's got the afternoon off to a great start. I think they like this drive a little bit better there, partner. Running game helping out, picking up some of the slack. Because remember the last drive, they went three and out. Operating out of Steeler territory now. Here's first and 10 at the 27. Looking to throw. Williams. Looking middle, and it's incomplete. Well, a momentary speed bump there with that throw, partner. The defense had other ideas, and they're trying to mount a small stand before this drive reaches the end zone. Now a second and 10. Off the play fake, Williams. Throw left side complete, that's more. And they're gonna have themselves another first down as the tackle's made at the Steelers' 16. 12 yards there as they move the chains. So the ball down to the 16 here for first and 10. Back to the running game with Swift. 
And they get to him quickly here as he stopped right around the 13. A gain of three, second down. He's had success on this drive, but not on this play. Finally, they bowed up defensively. I think they were determined not to let him take it pretty much all the way down the field. Yeah, it looks like they handled their run responsibilities correctly this time. When we call them run fits, everyone was in the right place. On second down, here's the option. And he takes this one in for a Bears touchdown. A 13-yard touchdown run. And the Bears go coast to coast and finish the drive off with six points. So they're down in the red zone. They opt to utilize his legs instead of the arm. It works out pretty well. I like what they were thinking there because in most situations now, defense is accounting for all the other runners on the field and, of course, for pass plays. But the quarterback position, oftentimes it is unaccounted for. Offense coordinator felt it, downed it right out. Inside the red zone, is this something teams should maybe, depending on the quarterback, do more often? Definitely. If you've got a quarterback who can actually move it with his legs, that's an extra option and an extra weapon for you. I think they should utilize it more often. After the touchdown, here's the punter, Trenton Gill, to kick it away. And he'll get it up across the 20 to the 21-yard line. So Pittsburgh retakes the field for their second offensive possession. A last series for him, a little disappointing, forced to punt. And now they'll try to do better here and come away with some points as they begin this drive, first and 10. They'll fake the handoff, now Fields. He gets it complete to Harris. And this one will go to the 28-yard line. That's good, the completion there for seven yards, and it's second down. They'd love to just strike back with a touchdown right here, and if it's a long play, so be it. But the main goal, get a couple of first downs, run some plays, run some clock, allow their defense to get a chance to catch their breath, settle down, and relax a little bit after they just gave up a score. After one, seven nothing on EA Sports. Steeler football here to begin quarter number two. Ball on the 28-yard line, here's second and three. Fields. And that one going to be off target and incomplete. Not sure what happened out there, but it looked like the timing was a little off on that throw. Well, you know I'm a defender, so what am I going to say? Great defense. And darn right. They did something to disrupt that timing. So the incomplete pass on the last play, and that leads us to a third and three. To throw his fields. Oh, he had him. He was open, but he couldn't get it to him. It's incomplete. Every offense tells you they want to come out and start fast. That's not unusual at all. But this group, they've yet to get much rolling through their first two drives. It looks like they're going to have to give up the football again after this one. Now on fourth down, it's Cameron Johnston on to punt it away. Jones on the return. 42-yard punt, six on the return. And the Bears take over. Well, let's shine the spotlight on the former Georgia Bulldog, DeAndre Swift, who's set to begin this next drive. And he's well on his way to a 100-yard game. He's already more than halfway there. We're only in the second quarter. And what I've always loved about running backs is they'll tell you, I had no idea how many yards I had. Right. Those guys have an innate <laughs> sense of where they are in a ball game and how many yards they've accumulated because you know they're always working towards 100. He's been working well towards 100 here. Williams throwing to start the drive. That's caught by his tight end, Gerald Everett. And he slips up past the 45 before being tackled. First down yardage on the first play of the drive, giving 14. It certainly feels like there are more stars at the tight end position than there were even 10 years ago. And I think it's become more of a glamour position because of the ways it can hurt a defense, and guys want to be involved. 
They can be in line, close to the line of scrimmage. They can split out like receivers. But hands, route running, speed, and some toughness to go across the middle, you put it all together, you got heck of a tight end candidate. And he'll get this one across midfield and down into Steeler territory. 74 yards rushing for him as he has been tough to stop here in this first half. From the 46, here's second down and three. Back to throw. Williams. This ball tipped, and it's going to be incomplete. Fortunate maybe to get that back. It's third down. You could tell they wanted to get that ball downfield, but they had nothing working in the secondary, so he dropped it off to the running back. That one ended up incomplete. So the incomplete pass on the last play, and that leads us to a third and three. Looking to throw. Williams. A little short pass. This is Everett. And he's got this down a yard or two shy of the 40 before he's out of bounds. Second catch for him today, and it'll wind up a first down. Now that's absolutely frustrating for a defender. Had a chance to get him on the ground before he got to the sideline, but what great vision and understanding where he is on the field as he headed for the marker and picked up the first down. Here's Williams on first and 10. To the right side, and he's got more complete. From the 38 now, here's second down and seven. On the option to give to Swift here. Nice little juke on a nice burst there as he'll take this inside the 30 to the 28-yard line. It's a pickup of 10 and a Bears first down. A CD a lot of times like to separate speed and quickness, and they've got a back that's both. We know that he's fast in the open field, but, man, his first step is so quick, too. It is something, isn't it? Because you think of that type of speed getting to the perimeter and turning upfield, but also when you run those inside runs, he can get into the secondary so fast the linebackers don't have a chance to react. Another big gainer that time. This one goes for 19 yards. Just picking up yardage in bunches here. These last few plays, they have moved right down the field. And just like that, they're going to be set up with a first and goal. Here's Swift. Oh, nice move. <laughs> And boy, showing how tough he can be to bring down, just fighting his way forward to pick up seven yards. That's good hard running right there on first and goal. That gets him down to the two and puts a lot more pressure on that defense. From the two now, second and goal. Swift again. And good work there defensively as they're able to keep him out of the end zone. Call it a gain of a couple. The defense stiffening here. It's third and goal. His path became similar to almost running a stretch play, didn't it? Trying to find a crease, anywhere to put his foot in the ground and cut back. It just never materialized. The ball mere inches from the white line on third and goal. Back to throw. Williams. Touchdown! Gerald Everett taking it in. And the Bears go up by two touchdowns. You get down near the goal line, this is where having a sure-handed tight end becomes a luxury, and it pays off big time, especially when the defense sells out against the run. He finds himself open for an easy touchdown. Now the point after try for Santos. And it's good to make it 14-0. So that one, a pretty time-consuming 10-play drive. And it culminates in a touchdown for Chicago.
Well, after the touchdown, here's the punter, Trenton Gill, to kick it away. Austin elects to bring this out of the end zone. And makes it across the 20 as his guys will set up shop at the 23-yard line. And Pittsburgh getting set to take the field. Still in the first half, but this offense has struggled. Haven't really been able to get anything going, not only in the points category, but in the yards category. Let's we'll see if they can do better here on this drive. They turn to Harris to begin the drive. He stiff arms him, breaks through the contact, and up to the 35 before they're able to knock him down. Nice way to start the drive, a gain of 12 and a first down. And that's the big fella's M.O. right there, running through tackles, keeping the sticks moving forward. This defense, if you don't bring 11 guys to the ball to try and get him on the ground, he's going to keep making runs like that. I feel the press box shaking every time he touches the rock. And that's caught inside the 35. A big play that time for Pittsburgh. 43 yards. Ah, so often when we're watching a football game, we see one with a lot of ebbs and flows, and this one is no different. And sometimes you just need a big play to wake you up a bit. And they get one right there, that shot of caffeine this offense was looking for. So the big play gets him all the way down to the outskirts of the red zone here for first and 10. Out of the gun, Fields. And incomplete, a drop there in the middle third of the field. That'll bring up second down. Fair to say, hasn't been his best game throwing the football, but also not getting a lot of help out there either. Yeah, you kind of, you nailed it pretty well, you know. <laughs> He's got to throw it better, got to get more help. Obviously one that should have been caught, They've got to find a way to bring those, those two elements together so they can make some progress in this one. Under pressure, and he'll go down. Sacked back at the 31. Montez Sweat, the man that time to fight in and drop him. What the goal is to get back into this game, the offense is certainly moving in the wrong direction. This is certainly a case where one team needs big splash plays right now, but unfortunately, it's the other team that's getting them. Now on third and long, they'll look to throw. That swung out wide to Harris. And he'll be a little shy of the 25 here at the 26-yard line. Five yards, not enough. And it'll be fourth down. We can make this one pretty simple. Locked up all of his progressions downfield, forced to get it to his running back. But how about the way they ran to the football and knocked him down to force a fourth down? Two minutes to play, first half. It's 14 to nothing. So on fourth down, the Steelers call on the number of Chris Boswell for the field goal try. From the left hash mark, this a 43-yard attempt. Boswell's kick is good. And they will get themselves on the board here at 14-3. So, Charles, they are on the board after that kick. So three drives, three points. Obviously not the start that you were hoping for, but they're able to erase that zero off the scoreboard. Yeah, I guess what you're saying is a point of drive is not what offenses are striving for by any stretch. They're happy they've got three now. They hope that that unlocks their offense for bigger points down the road. After the successful field goal try, here's Boswell to send it away. Tyler Scott now from his end zone. And they can't bring him down. And he's able to get this across the 20, but not by much, as he's marked down officially at the 21. Well, let's shine the spotlight on the former Georgia Bulldog, DeAndre Swift, who's set to begin this next drive. He's been good. His guys are winning. So far, the recipe working here in the second quarter. He doesn't like to just tote the rock. He wants to carry his team on his back. And that's what he's done throughout this game. Yeah, he's done that. He'll be hoping to continue that trend. Williams now throwing to start the drive. And he will find Scott on the right side complete. Just a gain of a couple there. 
And that will bring up second down. Well, there wasn't much there with that hitch route. They didn't gain what they expected. But sometimes when you call a hitch, you really don't have an alternate to go to. You don't have a second route to throw it to. So sometimes you have to rifle in there and hope for the best. Now Williams looking to throw on second down. They'll try and set up the screen to Swift. And he's brought down, getting this one up to about the 35. Mark that down as a pickup of 13, and the Bears have the first. When you run a screen pass really well, you got to like the look of it because so many parts come together to make it work well. The offensive linemen where they're faking people out, the back slipping out there, catching the football, then all of them going together as one unit downfield, a really nice pickup. And he'll protect himself at the end here as he winds up getting pretty decent yardage. Now the Bears going to call the first of their timeouts as they get the stoppage with just under 50 seconds remaining in half number one. Two yards to go, second down. Looking to throw, Williams. Now they go screen, it's complete. Only a yard there, sniffed out well defensively, and it brings up third. Good reactions there defensively. That screen was a little slow in developing, and they shut that one down with little gain. Here comes third and about a foot. Back to throw, Williams. He's got his target, that's complete. Now the Bears going to use the second of their timeouts as they'll stop it with 14 seconds to go in this first half. Two first downs have them up near midfield now on first and 10. Looking to throw, Williams. And that's out to the flat for Swift. And he's corralled, but not before getting it inside the 35. And with just four seconds left in this first half, a timeout call. So with four seconds to go in the half, here's the field goal unit onto the field. On the left hash, officially it's called a 51-yard attempt. Santos' kick is up and through, and they will stretch the lead now to 17-3. to So a big play before the end of the half to get him into this spot, and they cash in with three. How about the 1-2 to the solar plexus on that one? The big play, the field goal. Not much time left on the clock. That's the way to go into the half. So still time for the kickoff here. One second to go in the half as this one is away. So we have come to halftime in what's already a two-touchdown game. As we'll head down to Orlando, that's where we... Sorry, Coach, we'll catch up with you after the game. We're going to skip through halftime here and headed back to the field for the third quarter. And we welcome you back live now inside the booth alongside Charles Davis. I'm Brandon Gordon, set and ready to rock for the third quarter. Seventeen three, the score as we resume action for the second half on EA Sports. And he returns this to the 22. The Steeler offense ready to get going to begin this third quarter. 
Charles, it'll be interesting to see what adjustments this offense made in the locker room. Haven't really been able to get anything going offensively, virtually nothing in the ground attack either. So certainly something has to change here in quarter three. And I'm pretty sure their friends from the defensive side of the ball told them exactly that because those guys, the stop troops, they've been playing pretty well and they've kept them around in this game. Now they've got some time. The running game struggled in the first half. Opposition knows how to focus on defending the pass here. They've got to re-energize that ground game and maybe open things up for a comeback here in this half. Now second and three. On the give, this is Harris. And he'll take this to the 32, a gain of about three. Well, they still have time to get him established, but in my estimation, they've got to pick up the urgency here. They've got to get quickly in and out of the huddle and run off a bunch more plays. This offense in desperate need of a conversion as they come up on third down. Trying to pick it up on the ground with Harris. And he gets it to the 34. Good enough for the first. I'd say they've got to find a way to get him going. He's such a big part of their offense. I wonder if they might throw it a little and come back to the run. Anything, because you're right. He's pretty much been completely neutralized. From the 34 now, here's first and 10. Fields now to throw. Forced out to his left. And he slides and covers up at the end as he's going to be able to pick up decent yardage. The improv on the scramble there gets him six, and it'll be second down. The defense did its job of taking away a quick throw, but that's only half the battle because they've got to get to him before he can make a run for it. A little bit late containing him there, so he makes a nice gain out of a play that looked like it was in trouble. Here's Fields now on second down. That's going to be caught by Pickens. On the move past the 40 and down to the 28-yard line. That'll go as a pickup of 32 on the catch and run. Uh, that's the kind of play this offense desperately needed. They've got to be saying, our defense has kept us in the ball game. We're down, but we're certainly not out. And maybe that was the spark that they've been searching for. So now then, the big play has him all the way inside the 30 now, first and 10. Back to throw, Fields. He finds his man, complete. It's Harris. And he'll be out of bounds just inside the 25-yard line. They'll give him four yards there, and it'll be second down. And we see another pitch and catch there to the running back. This position just continues to evolve. They become just as critical to the passing attack as a lot of receivers tight ends because their ability to make people miss in the open field can really generate big plays for offense. And on this one, he'll get to the 15, right at the 15-yard line. That one, a first down pickup of eight. I'm okay with the call there. In fact, I actually like it. I know they're down a couple of scores, but the running game worked in that situation. I would continue to go in that direction. Still in search of their first touchdown of the game, but they're on the move. First and 10. They'll run again with Harris. And despite the fancy footwork we saw, they'll get to him just inside the 15. Give him a couple on the carry there. Second and eight. Not too many offenses want to turn down long drives, but when you're down what they are, they've got to pay it off with some points. Here's a second and eight. They hand this off to Harris, and he'll fight his way down right around the 12. He'll pick up only a yard there, and it'll leave him with a third and seven. I do know from experience that when you slow down someone's running game, you're now doing the dictating on defense, and guess what? Now you're getting ready to tee off on their quarterback because they have to throw it all the time. But you still have to be alert for the draws and other plays of that nature to make sure you don't get hurt. Throwing on third down, Fields. Finds Pickens out right. 
And he'll be tackled after a gain of four. Still three yards short. Fourth down. One hallmark of good defenses is understanding the game, understanding positioning, and tackling immediately in the secondary after catches. I think we just saw that on display right there. Got to him before he ever had a chance to think about turning it upfield. On fourth down, Fields. Eluding the pressure right. And he's going to take it in for a Steeler touchdown. Justin Fields, an eight-yard touchdown run. And the Steelers' decision to go for it pays off with six points. Hey, you're down on the scoreboard, but now your offense is in close, and this is where, as a quarterback, you say, I've got to make a play here. Doesn't matter whether it's a pinpoint throw or a scramble like this one. He takes matters into his own hands and delivers a touchdown run. Extra point put through by Boswell. And that slices the lead down to Boswell now to kick it away after the touchdown. And the drive will begin at the 25 as Scott is going to stay in the end zone. So here are the Bears now as they get set for their first possession of the second half. But Charles, they still have the lead despite their defense giving up a touchdown on the previous possession. And even though they have that lead, it feels like a back and forth ball game where to try to get momentum back, maybe they need at least three here on this drive. I think you're right about that, Brandon, because your game plan doesn't change. But I do believe your urgency does because of the last score that went against your team. So what you want to do now is have your own drive and try and make sure that that momentum stays in your camp. Linebacker Patrick Queen bringing him down. Well, it's time for them to be good teammates right here. And what I mean by that is possess the ball for a little while. Get at least two first downs. Give their defense a chance to settle down a little bit after they give up a touchdown. Man, I just love being in this stadium. So much history, tradition, so many great teams and games. And, and we're seeing a pretty good one right now. Hotly contested in the third quarter. Across the 30 to the 31-yard line. He'll get two on the keeper, but it becomes now a third down. Typically on the read option play, when we talk about responsibilities, we're talking about what the quarterback has to go through. How about the inside linebacker, though? His job on this play, shadow the quarterback and hold him to a short gain. Did it to perfection. Williams from the gun on third down. Looking left side, and he's got a man. That's Carlson. First time they've looked his way in this game, he comes through picking up the first. Well, a lot of times when you get a manageable third down situation like this, you have to think about your tight end, and he comes through for him picking up the first down. On first and 10, it's Swift to the 43, second down. Oh, that's a real nice job there by the defensive front. They just engaged and held their ground. But how about the guy who made the play? We often talk about whether they take a good first step or not. Many times, you just don't take any step. Just get your feet moving, get your body going. And then once he made the read, he was able to make the play. Right back to Swift again on second down. And good vision there as he's across midfield and down to the 45-yard line. 112 yards for him on the ground now as he has been terrific here this afternoon. Boy, where would these guys be without his performance on the ground? That puts him over 100 yards now for the afternoon, and I tell you, he seems to be getting stronger as the day goes along. On the option to give to Swift here. They're going to snuff this play out behind the line. We have not seen that much today. Stopped in his tracks and given a loss on that play by Patrick Queen. Well, that was one of the few times they've been able to contain him thus far. He's over 100 yards for the game, but he lost a bit off his total on that carry. Yeah, 
And they're not going to get to the line to run another play. So we will switch ends as the third quarter has come to a close. You are watching the NFL on EA Sports. Back now at Soldier Field. It's Bears football here. They also have the lead as well as we begin quarter number four. He's going to go out of bounds, but he takes this one down just shy of the 20. 25 yards, the pick up there, and also a first down. As I take a look at the clock, I realize that this drive has eaten up a good portion of the fourth quarter already. Got to tell you, partner, when you're trying to salt away a game, this is exactly what it's supposed to look like. Now they'll switch it up here and look to throw. Over the middle, and it's caught. Keenan Allen. And he gets it inside the 10 to the 9. It's a gain of 13 for number 13, and it gives him a first down. Well, a clear running situation. Trying to take time off the clock. He ran the previous play, set that play action up nicely. Boy, did they ever, because they had shown the ability to run the football. So now you lose your keys as a defense. You dive for the running play, and they hit him over the top. in the red zone with his second touchdown of the game. And the Bears have opened up a two-touchdown lead here in this fourth quarter. They have to love seeing that from their young quarterback here in the fourth quarter, able to further that lead with a touchdown pass. He didn't go turtle, did he? And you know what I mean by that. I had an old coach used to say all the time, hey, when we have a lead late, don't just tuck in and try and ride it out. Go out and play and extend the lead. And that's what he did. Santos able to tack on the extra point, and the lead now up to 14. To the touchdown. Here's the punter Trenton Gill to kick it away. Austin elects to bring this out of the end zone. And now out come the Steelers. A lot of time for this unit to game plan on the sideline after that drive that they watched the other side just score. But remember, last time they were out, they scored as well. We'll see if they can seize that momentum right back. And they have had a lot of time to cool off from reaching the end zone the last time. So have they been able to keep themselves mentally sharp and into this game, even though they haven't been on the field? And you and I both know, one big play, though, gets them right back up to that level. Meanwhile, Fields' throw complete to Fryermuth. And yeah, this will leave them a yard short. Nice pickup of nine yards on first down. Fourth quarter, every drive so critical, and you figure may only get one more shot after this, so a touchdown's imperative on this drive. It is, but you also have to think to yourself in play calling, don't hold anything back. Don't save it for the second touchdown. You got the first one for the second one to even matter. Throwing again on second down, but this time it's incomplete. Had an open man that time, but ended up putting a little too much heat on it, don't you think, partner? Absolutely, just needed a touch more air under it. Instead, he fired an absolute bullet. This offense so far on third down, just one for five to this point. They're up against a third and one situation. They'll run. Here's Harris. And he will not only not get the yard he needed, he goes the wrong direction. They end up getting stuffed twice after that nine-yard gain back on first down. There's no question that coming into this game, this defense was pretty vocal about his desire to take this running back out of his game. And all that pregame wolfing has turned into results. Here's Cameron Johnston now as he's on to punt for Pittsburgh. And a fair catch signaled for and taken just outside the 20 yard line. So possession goes over here on the punt and out will come the offense as they take over. The Chicago offense set to get started. 
Now, there are two scores on the plus side. Still time here in this fourth quarter, but maybe you start thinking about playing keep away. Yeah, I think here's the situation. You're not thinking touchdowns anymore. You're just thinking first downs to keep up with your theme there, playing keep away. First downs, they can't touch the ball. Here's Williams throwing to start the drive. A little short pass. This is Everett, and he's tackled a yard short of the marker. Good gain of nine on first down. Brandon, perfect defense in this situation would have meant that there was an incompletion that would have picked it off. Okay, so they gave up the completion. But I really enjoyed watching how the defense stayed in sync, stayed in great communication. And as he dragged across each zone, you see him pointing, communicating. There he is, and they passed him off to each defender. Ended up making a nice play, even though it was complete. A second down pass play there, but it's incomplete. I see the surprise in your face there, partner. That is a rare incompletion from him. He's been on point this entire game. He has percentage completion-wise way up. Not that time. They tried to the throw on second down, unsuccessful. Now it's third and one. Back to throw. Williams. Ah, he had a man open, but he missed him, and it's incomplete. That is certainly one way to frustrate a quarterback. Run those extra defenders on the field. Dime package, lots of speed, no space to fit in the football. Here comes the Bears punter now, as he'll punt it away for the second time. His first punt, 45 yards. This looks good as well. Now Austin. A seven-yard return following a punt of 45 yards. And the Steelers will go on offense here, first and 10. Pittsburgh set to take over again on offense. Their defense was able to force the punt. That's the good news. But this is still a two-score game, and they need points on this drive and in a relatively quick manner. A play fake, now fields to throw. He finds his man, complete. It's Harris. And they'll get him down after a pickup of eight, second and two. So from the 37, here's second and a couple. Now it's fields. Throw left side, hauled in by Pickens. And he slips up past the 45 before being tackled. 12 yards that time at a Pittsburgh first. You cannot write these guys off just yet, not with a quarterback like that under center. You mean it actually crossed your mind with him running the team that you could actually maybe write this game off? Not yet. Not a chance. Not with him. We've seen it too many times. Fields on first down. Here's one deep for Pickens. That's going to be knocked away and incomplete. And they're at the point of the ball game now where they've got to take some chances. They've got to put the ball in the air and just see what happens. But this defense knows that all too well. Second and 10. Again, Fields. Throwing quickly there, but it's incomplete. A lot of times it's that first read that you have. Maybe you get it in pre-snap and he locked in on his target, but he was covered quite well, and that one's incomplete. So back-to-back -back incompletions, and that has him staring at a third and ten. Here's Fields. Pass taken in by his big tight end. And he's going to have another first down as the tackle's made here at the Bears' 29-yard line. And they're able to convert on third with a solid gain of 23. Good yardage on the completion there. And when they look at the scoreboard, they do understand a field goal is not going to do them any good. My guess, they're going to press the ball downfield as far as possible, try and throw it into the end zone and get a score because they know they've got to get that done and get the ball back as quickly as possible. So into Bear territory now. This is first and 10 as they're down to the 29-yard line. Now this one to his tight end out on the right side. And he'll be out of bounds, able to get it down to the 25 there. 
I don't care what sport you're playing, everyone likes to build up a little momentum, don't they? And look at this, back-to-back -back completions to the big target at tight end. That one not as profitable as the other, but still a decent game. They fire this one quickly to Austin. And he gets it inside the 10 to the 9. That one goes for 16 yards. It sets him up first and goal. Now, correct me if I'm wrong. You know, you're down two scores. I don't think you need to rush just yet, but you can't take your time either. Yeah, even if you don't want to commit to full two-minute offense, you have to up the tempo, up the urgency. Maybe you're starting to call two plays in a huddle each time you snap the ball. Harris has it over the middle. And he'll be brought down right on the edge of the goal line at about the one-yard line. A gain of eight there on the eighth play of the drive. Good yardage on first down. Now can they punch it in on second and goal? From the gun, here's Fields. Got his man. It's caught for a Steelers touchdown. Pat Fryermuth from a yard out. And the Steelers have made it a one-score game again here in the fourth. You got to figure down by the goal line. This is where a tight end earns his money in the high traffic area. And he's able to work free in the middle of the end zone and grabs that one for a touchdown. Boswell good with the extra point. And now things get a bit more interesting here in this fourth quarter. Boswell now to kick it away after the touchdown. To return is Scott, fielded just outside the goal line. And he's up past the 20 to the 22-yard line. Another drive coming up for this Chicago offense. And with that last touchdown, I mean, we're set up for a good finish here. Some things to consider, Charles. Obviously, it's a very close game. You're in the fourth quarter. Defensively, they've got all three timeouts in their back pocket. So the chess match really ramps up, doesn't it? Because in these situations, what do you do? Do you run the ball and kill the clock here? Or do you try and bury them with another score? And how about defensively? Do you use your timeouts at earliest opportunity? Or wait till you hit the two-minute warning? So there's a lot going into this one. Let's see how each side goes about their strategy. Up past the 25 to the 26, a gain of five. And when do they start thinking about burning these timeouts? They've got all three still defensively. To me, you have to start right now. Here's the time, and that means you've got to stop them on defense, not give up the yardage, use your timeouts in order to get the ball back and try and score yourself. But now is the time to start using those timeouts. And keep in mind, it'll also stop the clock at the two-minute warning. And they work this well upfield across the 45. I'll tell you, there is no antidote for speed, even at the quarterback position, as he keeps it himself and turns it into good yardage. And it still takes time for a defender to react, even as quarterbacks carry the ball more and more in today's NFL. They're still a little bit in disbelief and realize, oh my goodness, he's running with the ball. He may be 8, 10, 12 yards downfield at that point. Fourth quarter, down to the final two minutes, and we've got a one-score game. Not totally home free yet, but it's looking good as they come up first and ten. They run out of the gun with Swift. And the result here, a pickup of eight. Leaves them with two to go on second down. And now right out of the two-minute break, we'll get a timeout used defensively with a minute 56 to go. So they come up on second down, and they can get another run like we just saw. It would likely put an end to this thing. He's going to get it again. Just looking to get forward and protect the ball. Now the Steelers use the second of their three timeouts. That'll leave them with just one remaining in this fourth quarter of play. Here now, third and a yard. They'll try and run here with Swift. 
And he is going to have the Bears first. And that should be the capper. And they will take a knee here. Second and 11 now. Quick slam, caught by Moore. And down inside the 15, shy of the 10. And this has been a nice answer to the touchdown drive against them a few minutes ago because they've come out and reestablished the tempo. A nice throw there, and they're putting together a very strong drive as a response. The win for the Bears just around the corner. They go down to a knee. Listen, anytime you take a knee to end a game, that means you've won it. So it doesn't matter whether it's home or on the road, but there's something a little extra special about doing it in front of your home crowd, isn't there? <laughs> and the home crowd applauding. They're happy with what they've seen. Chalk this one up in the left-hand column for a win. Yeah, that's right. Head to the locker room, throw the wristbands in the crowd for the kids, your gloves, your towels. Get to share it with the home team. Well, you really can't ask for much more than what we just had here. Not only a close game that went down to the wire, Charles, but a clean one, too. No turnovers in this contest. And I think you're exactly right about that. To me, this is just a pair of offenses trying to find the slightest bit of separation from each other. And they were both hoping that the other side would make the big mistake first. But today, neither side made that mistake. And what we got, a very entertaining game throughout. So that'll do it for us, for Charles Davis and all our crew. I'm Brandon Gordon. You've been watching the NFL on EA Sports. The Bears get the win at home as we say so long from Soldier Field.